Hello, this is Uz Report World News and my name is Bahram Gafanov. The coronavirus pandemic has had a devastating impact on global tourism. It affected almost all countries across the globe. Uzbekistan is no exception. Aziz Abdul Hakimov, chair of Uzbekistan's tourism committee during a press briefing last week, announced plans aiming to revive the sector. In 2020, Uzbekistan's tourism sector had faced a huge crisis because of quarantine. The country saw only one and a half million tourists. We have made some calculations for the current year. If some 1.7 million people will visit Uzbekistan, the state budget will receive 370 million US dollars. Particular attention will be paid to pilgrimage tourism. Meanwhile, we have problems with the logistics. We plan to open new roads. In addition, we should not forget about domestic tourism. Local residents will enjoy a 30% discount on air and train tickets, plus discounts in hotels. In the meantime, the the Uzbek government is planning to implement 900 million US dollars worth projects in the next three years in the tourism sector. The share of foreign direct investments is expected to comprise 739.5 million US dollars. Projects include the construction of 66 hotels, 12 shopping and entertainment business centers, nine parks of culture, three craft centers, etc. The implementation of investment project will create more than 6,000 jobs this year alone. Populist politician Tadir Japarov sprung from prison during the political unrest seen in Kyrgyzstan in October when a landslide victory in the snap presidential vote held on January 10th. The 52-year-old Japarov's release from prison immediately led him assuming the position of prime minister. He then quickly moved on to taking the role of interim president before he positioned himself to run for the permanent presidency. Japarov's lengthy prison sentence was a result of the kidnapping of a provincial governor. The presidential election, triggered as a result of the previous government's collapse amid upheaval that broke out after a parliamentary election that opposition parties decried as fixed, so Japarov secured 80% of the vote, according to preliminary results put out by the Central Election Commission. Over 80% of voters also supported a constitutional reform proposal to grant sweeping powers to president at the expense of the parliament. The reform is set to enter force by June. This officially ends Kyrgyzstan's ambition to remain a parliamentary democracy for the most part. Jepara faced off against 16 presidential poll rivals. Uzbekistan has abolished excise tax on the import of several types of goods, including appliances, some food products, carpets and metal structures. Earlier, the country reduced or abolished excise taxes on the import of almost 90 groups of goods from the CIS countries. These include transport, food products and building materials. Uzbekistan has had to unify the rates of excise taxes on goods of domestic production and import, as provided by the Agreement on Free Trade Zone among the CIS countries. Uzbekistan joined the agreement in 2013 and the transition period ended as the current year has begun. The Uzbek Anti-Corruption Agency reported that several regions of Uzbekistan, including Tashkent, Fergana, Samarkand and Kashkadaria, have been found to engage in corruption the most. The highest numbers of cases were in public procurement, healthcare, education and construction sectors. Last year, the agency received 837 requests. Of these, 14 petitions, 4 warnings and 12 requests to initiate criminal proceedings were sent to the prosecutor's office and the ministry. Besides, to prevent corruption, the government has recently approved a procedure for rewarding individuals who report information on corruption. Our establishment has the most effective mechanism of preventing corruption. It helps to easily deliver preventive measures, actively attracts citizens to anti-corruption system, and this is the condition in achieving success in this movement. The amount of one-time cash award ranges from $60 to $500. However, a false report is punishable under a libel clause. Uzbekistan's Gisar Nature Reserve has spotted red-listed rare snow leopard. The video footage was published by the State Committee for Ecology and Environmental Protection. 
The snow leopard lives in the mountain ranges of Central and South Asia. It is listed as vulnerable on the International Union for Conservation of Nature Red List because the global population is estimated to number less than 10,000 mature individuals and is expected to decline about 10 percent by 2040. It is threatened by poaching and habitat destruction following infrastructural developments. Taxonomically, the snow leopard was long classified in the monotypic genus Uncia. Deputy Chair of Board of Trustees of the Public Foundation for Support and Development of National Mass Media in Uzbekistan, Saida Mirzoyeva, met with Ambassador-at-Large for Global Women's Issues, Kali Curry. According to Mirzoyeva, the meeting proposed joint projects in this area as the public attention should be drawn to the problems of gender equality. We had a face-to-face -face meeting with Ambassador-at-Large Kelly Curry as a Deputy Chair of the Media Foundation's Board of Trustees and a member of the Gender Equality Commission. I believe it is important to draw the public's attention to the problems of gender equality and facilitate the self-realization for women, Saida Mirziova said on her Twitter account. According to her, the parties discussed the ways to enhance the rights and opportunities for women in Uzbekistan and Central Asian region. A recent resolution signed by the Uzbek government aims at strengthening the social protection system of women. The main focus will be given to particular groups of women in need. The intended groups are unemployed women in need of social protection, women in need who have lost their breadwinner, women who live in a non-residential premises, single women who have a child with disabilities, women in need of medical protection or legal assistance, women who need psychological counselling. As part of the programme, the needs and interests of women are studied by house-by-house -house survey in the 15 days of the first month of each half-year. Parents in Uzbekistan were displeased to hear about the shifting of education at schools completely to traditional form of education. The decision was set to take effect on January 11th. Taking into account the wishes of these parents, the Ministry of Public Education has made a decision to continue online education. Those who fear for the health of their child can now use their opportunity to continue their studies from home. Before the start of the winter holidays, 90% of the students returned to the traditional form of education. Our goal was to reach the remaining 10% of students, the ministry said in a statement. Referring to survey among students, the ministry reported they lacked direct communication with their teachers and peers. Students who don't attend school, unfortunately, are deprived of this opportunity. It's very important for a child to be in a constant contact with friends and learn with them, and no modern technology can provide such an environment for a child, the ministry added. It urged parents who don't send their children to school to create all the necessary conditions for learning at home and take this process under full control. Indonesian rescue teams were scouring wreckage of a crashed passenger plane for black data boxes on Monday. The head of rescue efforts around the downed Sriwijaya air jet said they'll focus on finding the bodies of victims, a sign that chances of finding survivors are fading. Anything that we can retrieve, debris, victims or anything else, we will try to access. The quicker we can find victims, the better. The Boeing 737-500 jet disappeared from radar four minutes after takeoff from Jakarta, headed toward Borneo Island. 62 people were on board. Officials say Monday's search will cover a wider area under the Java Sea and along the coast, in case debris had been carried by the current. Authorities already pinpointed the location of the jet's data recorders, or black boxes, over the weekend while rescuers recovered the jet's fuselage and human remains. Only two years ago, Indonesia saw another deadly crash when a faulty Boeing 737 MAX killed all passengers and crew on board. In a statement over the weekend, Boeing offered condolences and said, We are in contact with our airline customers and stand ready to support them during this difficult time. The Srirajaya airplane was a nearly 27-year-old Boeing 737-500, a model much older than Boeing's plagued 737 MAX. The Spanish government is forming convoys carrying the COVID-19 vaccine and food supplies to areas cut off by the heaviest snowfall to hit the country in decades.
Storm Philomena has so far killed four people across central Spain and in the capital Madrid, rescue workers worked to reach 1,500 people trapped in their cars. Carlos Novello is director of the Madrid Security and Emergency Center. It's going to be very complicated. We're facing extremely low temperatures. Snow is disappearing, but there's a lot in the road and it's starting to freeze and ice is appearing. Police even broke up a large snowball fight after authorities appealed for citizens to stay at home for risk of accidents and their own health. Forecasters warned of dangerous conditions in the coming days, with temperatures expected to fall as low as minus 10 Celsius. That's just 14 Fahrenheit. About 100 workers and shoppers have spent two nights sleeping at a shopping centre in a town north of Madrid. Spain's transport minister announced they would be sending convoys transporting the vaccine and food supplies to those in need. After around 20,000 kilometres of road around Spain became blocked because of snow. After a video of unruly Trump supporters harassing lawmakers in airports and reports of disruptions on flights to and from Washington, the same week Trump loyalists descended on D.C. and stormed the Capitol, the head of the Federal Aviation Administration vowed to take, quote, strong enforcement action. In a statement over the weekend, FAA Administrator Steve Dixon said, quote, I expect all passengers to follow crew member instructions, which are in place for their safety and the safety of flight. Earlier this week, the Flight Attendants Union said Trump supporters who stormed the Capitol should not be allowed to depart Washington on commercial flights after exhibiting, quote, mob mentality behavior on flights into the region. Alaska Airlines said on Friday it banned 14 passengers from future travel with the carrier after a number of passengers were, quote, non-mask compliant, rowdy, argumentative, and harassed our crew members on a flight from Washington to Seattle last Thursday. American Airlines temporarily halted alcohol service on flights departing and arriving in Washington after last Wednesday's events. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham was harassed on Friday by supporters of Trump and called a traitor at Washington's Reagan National Airport. Some of the world's biggest companies said on Sunday they will suspend donations to U.S. lawmakers who voted against certifying President-elect Joe Biden's victory. They include two of the biggest U.S. banks, J.P. Morgan Chase and Citigroup, the world's largest hotel company Marriott, as well as Blue Cross Blue Shield Association, a federation of 36 independent companies that provide health care insurance. It follows last week's violence in Washington, when President Trump supporters stormed the Capitol in an attempt to stop the formal recognition of Trump's defeat. Five people died, including a police officer. J.P. Morgan and Citigroup said they will pause all political action committee donations over the coming months. In a memo to employees seen by Reuters, Citigroup's global government affairs head Candy Wolf said, quote, We want you to be assured that we will not support candidates who do not respect the rule of law. They had previously donated to Republican Senator Josh Hawley, who led the charge against the certification of Biden's win. Other major U.S. companies like Ford and Walmart haven't paused donations yet, but a Walmart spokesman said they will factor in last week's events to their review process. Meanwhile, the digital payments company Stripe said it would stop processing payments for Trump's campaign website following the riot. And late Sunday, the PGA tweeted that its board voted to strip the 2022 PGA Golf Championship away from the Trump National Bedminster Golf Club in New Jersey. Budget airline EasyJet received a boost on Monday as it battles through more turbulence. The carrier raised liquidity through a new five-year loan of $1.87 billion. It's backed in part by the British government and should ease concerns over its finances as travellers stay at home. Like most airlines, EasyJet had hoped to see a recovery this spring, but countries including Britain are now back in lockdown and that is likely to delay any recovery by several months. EasyJet said the new loan improved its debt situation. It plans to repay and cancel an earlier credit facility of $500 million and term loans of about $540 million. 
The British carrier has made numerous efforts to survive the pandemic. It's let go of 4,500 staff so far, asked shareholders for cash and sold dozens of its aircraft. It did not rule out even more action in a statement on Monday. The new loan was underwritten by a number of banks. It was also backed by guarantees from the British government's UK Export Finance Department. So far, these were the latest news for today. Goodbye, take care.